hit that like or the dislike and hit the subscribe button. take two of this shit I fucking I shot a 30 minute video and I don't know what the fuck happened it said it was recording the whole time turned it off tried to edit it and my video was gone I don't know what the fuck happened hopefully this doesn't happen again and I'll start it like I always do with a rip and a sip Subject for today is Jesus Saves Serial Killers. That may or may not be the title of this, but that's what I'm going with right now. Um, let me get my notes here. So we're going to talk in, talk, talk in. We're going to jump into this. We're going to talk about um, three serial killers. We're going to talk briefly about their crimes. Um, I'll try not to get too deep, too deep into that because of time constraints and we'll just see where the fuck it goes. First, just because, uh, it's fresh in my mind. We'll talk about, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, who was a cannibal, uh, serial killer from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I believe. Doesn't matter the fucking details i guess they're all pieces of shit um he like i said he preyed on his victims who were mostly gay men i think i think exclusively gay men i, I could be wrong he might have had a straggler somewhere that he got but um he would kill them and eat them and it basically came from a compulsion to be able to have a human that he could own, that he could keep there with him at all times. And he tried to like make zombies out of them and uh, different things. He dismembered them and uh, dissolved some of their body parts in acid. He kept some of their body parts, some of the, uh, the penises from his victims. He would keep them and, you know, who, you know, you can use your imagination, try to figure out what he was doing with them. They were in his fridge. He also ate, you know, pieces of them, so he was refrigerating parts of them so he could cook it later. So he was a general piece of shit, uh, uh, a murderer and a cannibal and, uh, yes, just a general vile human being. So, um, let's see, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah, Dahmer, after he was caught... And he was caught because basically the smell got too bad and people started bitching about it. And it was in like a, in a, uh, an apartment project that was mostly black people, I think. So the cops really didn't give a shit kind of like today. And, um, so Dahmer got caught. I remember seeing, seeing it on the news, them hauling these big blue drums that he had in there, like the big 50 gallon drums. He had them like full of like dissolving, body parts and corpses in various states of decomposition and they drug all this shit out and like caught him and whatever. So then Bundy or not Bundy, then Dahmer goes to jail. He gets caught, goes to prison, goes to court, does all of his bullshit and he gets sentenced. And I want to say he got life. Um, I don't even, you know, I don't think he got the death penalty or whatever, but, uh, anyway, he eventually was attacked and killed by another inmate. So he ended up dying in prison. But before that, we had two general fuck faces named Roy Radcliffe and Kurt Booth, who were both, uh, preachers and pastors. 
uh kurt booth was a pastor that i it said in his little bio that he did time himself he did like four years for what he said was thievery so whatever you know i i couldn't find much information on him i looked and uh roy radcliffe who is also a general piece of shit and um so they focused instead of on uh, Dahmer's victims on trying to do do something good, something Christian like for the victims or the victims' families, because I don't think any, I only think there was like maybe no, I don't, I don't think any of Dahmer's victims made it out alive. Maybe maybe one or two, but uh, you know, go to the victims' families like pay for the funerals or you know something you know give them something but no they were they were gay individuals most of them so instead of that what well so was Dahmer so I guess I can't really fucking do bitch that much about that aspect but they probably thought they gay converted him or some shit but anyway these two dickheads Roy and Kurt are responsible for making sure that uh Jeffrey Dahmer got a baptism tub like i guess blessed in the church or whatever the fuck and brought in so he could get baptized to make sure that he got into heaven that's what they were very concerned about they weren't concerned about the victims the victims families helping them out they were concerned about making sure jeffrey dahmer got to go to fucking heaven so they made sure to get a baptism tank brought in so jeffrey could get baptized and they baptized him in prison and they made sure he got saved and they were giving him um, like multiple copies of the Bible. I think I want to say like 20 copies or some shit like that starting off to so he could recruit other inmates for uh, these two dipshits. So, uh, yeah, eventually I think somebody beat him to death with like a, a weight bar or a fucking broomstick or some shit mop handle. I can't remember. So we'll jump then from Dahmer to a real piece of shit named Albert Fish. Oh, back to Dahmer real quick. Uh, He also did a Stone Phillips interview. Dahmer did. And in that interview, Dahmer starts trying to refute evolution. He starts promoting young earth creationism with his father. His father's there. It's Jeffrey Dahmer, his father, and Stone Phillips, I believe, is who all is involved in this interview. And um, uh, Dahmer's dad's a fucking dumb young earth dipshit. And Dahmer basically gives this big spiel about how, oh, if we just come from slime, then we don't have any morals and all this shit. Yeah, you didn't have any morals anyway, you motherfucker. Like, it doesn't matter if you think that or not. Like, you were... You were a psychopath devoid of uh, empathy for other humans, and you murdered them and ate them. And then you converted to Christianity to try to get your your little free meal ticket into heaven after you did all the depraved shit that you did. And then you had little fucking cohorts like fucking uh, Roy Radcliffe and Kurt Booth who fucking tried to help you do that instead of helping the victims, the people that you ate, the families of the people you ate and the families you destroyed. No, they wanted to help you and try to help themselves by saving this mass murderer or whatever the fuck they were trying to do. So yeah, general pieces of shit. And then we will move from them to Albert fish who Albert fish was born in uh, May 19th, 1870. So he was a old piece of shit. And, um, he killed and ate children and he, uh, not he, but they kind of blamed a lot of this, a lot of his, uh, deviancy on the fact that he spent time in this, uh, Catholic orphanage, this St. John's orphanage. And he, um, he found out at a young age I think he was nine when he was in there that the abuse, the physical abuse that he received from the nuns and the staff there, like they would whip him with objects and hit him with rollers and yardsticks and stuff. And, um, he realized that he was a masochist, that he liked pain. And he, uh, he really, uh, enjoyed physical pain 
to the point later in life that he uh he would stick needles into into his taint into the spot between his his anus and his uh testicles and he put multiple like needles and hat pins and different objects up in the into that area of his body so when he would sit down anytime he was sitting down he would be in pain and he liked it so that and that's minor that's very 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 tame compared to the shit that he was doing to other people and i'm not going to get into it too much if you're interested in that type of shit go check out albert fish because he's a fucking maniac and he uh yeah back to that he enjoyed physical pain at age 12 fish began eating feces and drinking urine because he met this uh, other boy that he was friends with i think from that orphanage maybe and they began doing that activity so i'm sure psychologically there's something that's a indicator of something if you do that perhaps i don't know maybe it's more than a kink i believe but i i could be wrong i don't know then um he found Oh, he also found victims in newspaper ads because there was no internet or anything like that. So he would find his victims on classified ads of like some lady that had children that her uh, husband had died. He would find them to prey on their children. Uh, Sorry, I'll continue here in a second. All right, I'm back. Um... Yeah, so he would search the uh, classified ads to find his victims, or basically his victims' parents, and then he would prey upon the children or the uh, mentally disabled. And he said that God instructed him to do all the vile, awful things he did, including killing, dismembering, and eating children. And he ended up going to prison, and I think they executed him. Uh, for those crimes. So there we have two of possibly the worst serial killers I know that have either converted to Christianity and been saved by this particular God or call the God their reasoning for doing the awful shit that they did. Like Albert Fish was way worse than Dahmer. Like he did awful shit. And now... Third, I will move on to Ted Bundy. And I think I'm going to get a rip and a sip between subjects here. So um the one we got coming up now is Ted Bundy and Ted Bundy is a that's a, a a big subject all on its own because he did so much shit So Bundy if you don't know who he was he was a serial killer he was the part of what how they blame his serial killing is that uh, his, his it was later in life for him it was found out that his mother was actually his sister or that his who he thought was his sister was actually his mother and his grandparents who he thought was his mother and father were actually his grandparents because he, his mom had him at a young age. And it, it was rumored that her, her father, Ted's grandpa may have fathered him, but I don't, I don't think that's true. It could be, but, um, I think, I think she just got pregnant and didn't, didn't know who it was or didn't want to tell people who it was. 
And so she went to this place, uh, the something home for unwed mothers, which was a thing they had back then because it was so frowned upon and shamed by who else? Christians. And um, so they try to blame the fact that he found out later in life that he was born out of wedlock and who he thought was his sister is now his mother and all this crazy shit. And, um, so he starts, I believe he started his spree. It's, it's debated upon where he actually, actually killed his first victim because they, there's people who say he did it when he was a young child, like 14 or something. They said they thought, he may have killed a nine-year-old little girl whenever he was 14 and the little girl was on his paper route. And there's a bunch of, I mean, there's some convincing shit, but there's no, I don't, I don't think they had DNA or anything to, to try to do anything because that wasn't even a thing back then. And they didn't save anything in hopes that there would be anything like that. They didn't even know. So who knows about that? But he basically started killing from, uh, uh, Washington State around the colleges there and he would kill his victims take them up onto Taylor Mountain and he had like a little graveyard up there and some hikers ended up discovering it and Bundy was a necrophile he would go up there and uh, continue to have sex with his victims corpses and he said he would like bring he must have brought like either there was a stream nearby or he brought water along with shampoo and makeup and he would uh, shampoo their hair and put makeup on their face because of decomp. Uh, the skin starts changing colors and shit and maggot activity and stuff until that would get to such a repulsive state that would make him go away and not do it anymore and then he would get another victim and perform the same shit on them so Bundy moved from killing in Washington State he started moving east to Utah he killed all the way along the way from there to there went to Utah got baptized into the Mormon church or the Church of Mormon whatever you want to call it and he was I think I'm pretty sure he did that just to uh to f to blend in so he could be more of a creepy piece of shit and be able to go to churches and stalk victims there. And he moved from there to Colorado where he became incarcerated in Colorado. Then he escaped from imprisonment twice and ran from Colorado to Florida. So he killed him from the West coast all the way to the East coast. And I have no reason to believe he wasn't killing people on his way from uh, uh, Colorado to Florida. And he got to Florida, ended up going on a wild, frenzied spree of killing in one night. He had like five victims in the Chi Omega sorority house and then moved from there like three blocks down the street and started again on like three other victims, I believe, that... I believe they made it, I think, or two of them did or one of them did or something. I'm not sure. But like as the police were investigating the, the sorority house murders, a call went out again and they were like, holy shit, that's like two blocks down the road. Could it be him again? And it sure as shit was. And then he escaped there and ran somewhere, stole a car murdered a nine-year-old child and then got caught pulled over on a traffic violation i believe and uh got caught went to jail in florida and then he um ended up getting the death penalty and while he was on death row his in his final hours james dobson who is a fuck face from uh focus on the family uh, Christian hate group and he interviewed Ted Bundy Ted Bundy blamed pornography and detective magazines which were old um, I remember seeing them on the shelves when I was a little kid it really wasn't I don't think it was pornography like as far as showing nudity or anything I don't think it showed nudity it was like 
it would just say detective on the top and it would show some lady like graphic novel style like animated or whatever like uh drawn like a lady in lingerie like changing her clothes and there'd be like a a jack the ripper killer behind the curtains with a knife like peeking around you know being being a sneaky fuck and like those were the detective magazines and like bundy was citing them as his motivation to kill women when it's quite the opposite like they wrote those magazines about pieces of shit like bundy like those those magazines were coming out because of fuckers like him because of him and like people that were making women disappear and they were doing shit like that like yep bundy those fucking books were wrote about you you dirtbag fuck you did not kill because of them they were written because of you and then like they tried to blame it on pornography and they what what else was it i think he even said something about like sugar like like being eating candy or something some fucking wild shit and uh yeah he like focused on moral horseshit well what he was doing the last little manipulation victim he could have was james dobson james dobson was a christian so he was going right along with whatever james dobson was promoting at the time which was anti-gay anti-porn all this fucking nonsense that porn caused people to kill people and caused people to be whatever the fuck and uh like i think back then they thought gay porn could turn you gay like gay was something you could catch or get like wildness um anyway so from those three assholes what i was going to try to get at with this whole thing was they either claimed god motivated them to do this or got forgiveness from god for doing it according to christian preachers and shit and like bundy like also he he asked james dobson for for you know to help him find jesus and all that bullshit so he was his last little manipulated victim there and maybe bundy did think there was some kind of chance for him to become a a fucking you know a, a magic little fairy in heaven or whatever the fuck um but yeah you might be able to tell i'm trying to kind of rush through this because it i've i've done this all once and uh I'm hoping that this time it records, but, uh, yeah, I think I covered what I wanted to, and just, I wanted to say about what kind of God would it be that instead of the God doing something to help the victim's families, like I'll focus right back onto that, the victims or the victim's family, because Bundy left a a living victims that were never the same. Why didn't God do something to help those victims? Why, why did he not do so? I mean, not to mention, why did he just not step in and stop the rape and murder of up to a hundred women? Like there was a lot and Bundy was not telling all of the information because he was trying to dole it out to, to get himself more time alive and it didn't work they ended up just executing him but like the 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 idea of this all loving god like is just complete bullshit when you look because they try to make this out as this god must be this amazing god if he's saving these serial killers right if he's good enough to forgive these serial why do you think that's good Why do you think it's good to forgive people for awful, horrendous, horrible shit? Sometimes you shouldn't forgive people for anything they've done when it's something awful like Albert Fish murdering and eating children, Jeffrey Dahmer murdering and eating our LGBT brothers and sisters, fucking goddamn Ted Bundy fucking murdering and uh, performing necrophilic acts on women and they they thought like he he snapped because he was rejected and could basically couldn't handle it and he was this little young republican that was like trying to be this up-and-coming politician and all this bullshit so it's something to check into if you're interested in true crime and uh yeah i'm gonna try to wrap it up 
like I always do with a rip and a sip. Mm-hmm.